Hi, this is Darwin Gross again with a couple of more minutes of BEEP. Uh, last month when we looked at BEEP, we kind of built a basic patch uh, using MIDI into an oscillator, a filter, an ASR envelope, a VCA, and to the outputs. This week we're going to kind of focus on a couple of different oscillator types. The first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the, the oscillator uh, that we used in our original patch. It's actually a really nice little tool. It emulates a lot of analog modular oscillators. Um, it has the ability to tune off of offsets, although this is our only oscillator. We're going to just leave it as is. But it gives us four different waveforms, a sine, a triangle, a sawtooth, and a rectangle wave. And we're going to look into those just a little bit more. In order to see what's going on, we're going to unlock the patch we're going to go to the scope category and we're going to select big scope. Big scope is in fact a big scope and if we take the output of the oscillator what we get right away is we get the ability to see the see the waveform. Now it starts off pretty well zoomed in. You can choose the smart things but I just like kind of dividing and multiplying until I get uh, a vision of what I want to do. Now you have to, you do have to lock the patch in order to make that happen. But now we get a chance so we can see what the sine waves, there we go. Um, if I switch to triangle waves, they become a little more pointed. Uh, they also kind of reduce in volume, which is a little odd. We have sawtooth waves, which again are a little bit uh, reduced in volume. And finally, our rectangle wave. Now you'll notice when we select the rectangle wave, something happens that's cool here which is our pulse width and our pulse width modulation options all of a sudden become active. We'll worry about pulse width modulation when we actually play with modulation but for pulse width you'll actually be able to see, let me zoom in a little more, as we change the pulse width as it gets smaller we see a little thinner down uh, downward moving oscillation as we move upward it thins out the upward moving oscillation so this gives us kind of a peculiar sound if I play a note you can hear that the harmonics change significantly as the pulse width gets thinner. So there's a lot, just within this single module, there's a lot of different sonic options. We have the sine, very pure tone, a triangle wave, still pretty pure, but a little with a little bit of an edge, a sawtooth wave, which is really edgy, edgy and buzzy, and the rectangle wave, which is normally a fairly warm sound, but also can get get a lot of change based on your pulse width setting. So that's the uh, standard oscillator. Now I'm going to just uh, unlock my patch, remove a couple of these things. I'm going to get rid of this oscillator and show you another oscillator I really like. Uh, going to the oscillator category, we select the FM oscillator. I'm kind of a big fan of FM because first of all, it's sort of difficult to wrap your head around so a lot of people don't use it. But secondly, there are some tricks particularly as displayed by this oscillator to help you get some get some uh, really good action out of it. One of the most important things with an FM oscillator is the ratio. The ratio is kind of key because uh, even ratios and if I click on a knob I can just type in 2 and I'll get the ratio of 2. It tends to be a very sonorous and uh, good sounding thing and then if I increase the depth Even though it starts breaking up and getting a little more like buzzy, what it actually is doing is it's still sort of staying in tune. Now if I do something that's an odd interval, so if I do 1.23, I get a very mechanical sound. Now finding all the magic ratios is uh, can be a little weird. Some of them aren't as cool as you'd think. Some of them are really cool. You'll know, notice how much the sound changes when I change the depth. That's because the frequency modulation of the pitch 
is going from really wide to really narrow and back. It's it's a really there's a lot of complexity in this simple FM oscillator. And I strongly suggest that you use it and play around with it. But beyond just using it and experimenting, um, I would like to show you or key you into something that was really helpful to me. This is Simon Kahn's How to Make a Noise Frequency Modulation Synthesis book. It's a Kindle book. It's three bucks. And because it's a Kindle book, you can read it on almost anything. Um, it is well worth the money. At three bucks, it's a fantastic way to get a few hints on some of the magic ratios, some of the easiest ways to use the thing, um, and all this stuff is going to translate directly into what you see with the FM oscillator in your basic patch. Now, the third oscillator I want to talk about is uh, kind of a great one. If we go again into the oscillator section and select sampler, we'll drag it over here, and what we see is basically it is a waveform sample that we can treat like an oscillator. Now, instead of just placing it into my, uh, into my existing patch, I'm going to show you another really important trick. If you click on, with your patch unlocked, if you click on any beep object and then you uh, bring up the help file, we actually have help files for all of the beep objects. So in this case, the sampler has a keyboard connected to a sampler, connected to an output. So it's a very simple output system, but it's still great for trying things out. So now I've, it comes preloaded with a sample. If I play it, it's that Cherokee sample that's a classic hit from olden Max MSP days. But you'll hear that it works like a classical sampler in that it does all the pitch stretching and everything over the stretch of the keyboard. It's really cool. The other thing that's nice, though, is that while you have a sample stuck in here, you can also just grab any kind of sample. In this case, I'm going to grab one from this Earth Cycle sample set that I bought. And you can bring it over here and just drop it right into the sampler. And now it is the sample that will be used by this patch. Okay. And you can see that there are a lot of interesting options. You can have things loop. You can record into this little sampler. This is still kind of under some uh, rework. We've got a little bit of work to do to get some of the looping functions working correctly. But generally speaking, it's an awesome addition. And especially because you can record into this, it means that now you can kind of build little funky, loopy systems into your beep modular patch that emulate a lot of the cool functions of some of the more advanced um, Euro rack modules like the Ecophon and some of those things. So with that, um, I'm going to leave it, leave it with you, but uh, hopefully that's kind of inspired you to try a couple of things. Hopefully maybe learn a little bit more about FM synthesis, something that I think way too few people know about, but also the ability to play around with sampling and play around with just the, sto the standard oscillator to understand how all those waveforms work. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Happy patching, as we like to say, and have a great day. I'll catch you next month.